Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Email me directly for pricing at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. In 2007, Jaeger Lecoultre launched the most innovative chronograph of the 2000s, and this watch, the Duomet a chronograph, is that model. But this watch is more. 42 millimeters in platinum ultra white. This is the platinum boutique model. There was also a standard platinum model with a gray dial. This silver white dial was exclusive to JLC factory stores and it is extraordinary. Now let's talk about size. 42 millimeters in diameter. The watch is 13.8 millimeters thick and 50.4 millimeters from lug to lug with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Zoom out a little bit, throw it on my wrist. I owned this watch in white gold for years. For four years, it was probably my favorite watch. Of all the watches I owned, I idolized it for four, and then after that, I finally owned it for four in addition. So for eight years, my life as a watch enthusiast revolved around this model. I was never disappointed. And you can see it fits me well. Although my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see the timepiece is not excessively broad, being 50.4 millimeters across the wrist. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. And you will note it is thin enough that it will fit underneath most cuffs. Though it is not objectively a super thin watch, it's got a sloped slide and a domed sapphire, so it sits a little bit lower effectively than its thickness would suggest. Now, if you take a look closely, you can see this, although colorful and extravagant, is a JLC factory strap. Large rectangular scale alligator leather. You can see that the timepiece uses a little bit of bolstering to add volume to the strap, a monotone stitch, and it is lighter than navy blue. I'd call it maybe cobalt or ultramarine. You can see the side is sheer cut showing the layers of leather and then it's calfskin natural on the underside. The watch features a double deployment clasp in white gold. The case is platinum, the clasp is white gold, and you can see there is a slight tonal contrast between the white gold and the platinum ultra white. And the reason that white gold has been used since 2006 on JLC deployant clasps is because it is a double fold deployant. White gold is the hardest gold, and JLC assumed if you're going to do a white metal, make sure it is sure tight and secure against bending. And that's what you get from the white gold. It's also a rich accoutrement as modern dual met despite their price and stature on the line, do not always come with folding clasps. Now, this case is beautifully made. Uh, the timepiece has lovely welded-on lugs. This is old-school manufacture. The lugs in the case made separately. The lugs are then inserted into a notch in the case and welded on with evidence of the joint removed. And the case is a little bit like a longa. It's kind of sheer, cylindrical. It has brushed sides and then stepped-out lugs. And achieving that double polish where you have satin on one side and then the lug itself in mirror finished. That is super difficult to do, and you can see that the evidence of the welds has been removed so well, you can scarcely believe that these lugs were welded on as separate parts. You can see the crown is media blasted externally with polished ring and then a raised, relieved, and polished JL logo. Note the double knurling. This crown is a pleasure to hold. The chronograph pusher, and there is just one, it's a mono pusher, is satinated on its side and then polished on its face. And then you can see that the bezel has a vertical section and a conical section, with the bezel conical portion being relatively narrow opening up the dial and allowing it to breathe. Taking a quick look at the watch from the dial side, there's a lot going on. Lots of hands, lots of registers. Let's break it down. Basically, everything on this side of the watch is for the chronograph. You have a single digit minutes disc that scrolls. You have a minutes hand that you can use to read tens of minutes and then your single digits. And then coaxial to that, you can see there is an hour hand. The chronograph hands, including the power reserve indicator, are all fired blue. And then we have white gold hands that are then rhodium plated for whiteness on the time telling side of the watch. So here you have your power reserve for the time. You have center seconds for both chronograph and time, which gives the watch an extravagant and unusual look. There's also a one sixth of a second foot for the chronograph, and you can see applique quarter Arabic numerals for the time. The dial has a lovely silver white tone with a rusticated pebble-like sandpaper inspired grain, so it truly is special. Remember, the standard platinum model had a gray dial. Two power reserves, both 50 hours. This watch achieves uh, two primary goals. One, Activating the chronograph without diminishing the balance amplitude, because chronographs typically lose about 30 to 40 degrees of balance amplitude when you turn on the complication. Not just not losing amplitude, though, 
not losing power reserve. When you double the power requirement in this watch, you double the power, you double the force, you double the energy supplied. Two main spring barrels, you wind them in different directions with one crown, and you can see the ratchet system they used inspired by late 19th century JLC pocket watches. In fact, the entire movement inspired by a minute repeating chronometer pocket watch built on a Victor Piguet a Bausch and you can see that in the JLC Heritage Gallery Museum but it was not until the 2000s that this system could be built on a scale and that's what JLC achieved with the dual wing movement. Two barrels, two drive trains, really two movements in one case. They have a single regulator which basically starts and stops each barrel in turn, each drive train in turn. So when you double the power requirement, you double the power. The balance loses no amplitude. 50 hour power reserve with the chronograph running, 50 hour power reserve without the chronograph running. There is a column wheel system in what I believe to be an oscillating pinion clutch. The column wheel is four columns, so you can see it's a mono pusher style column wheel. And then the balance beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour and it's free sprung for durability. Now you can see this movement, which is water resistant down to 50 meters, is unusual in its architecture, not just because it uses that pocket watch dual train layout, but because this 49 joule movement uses my shore or nickel copper zinc, a material typically described as German silver and used on notably longa movements. So you have that same copper hue of gold across the surfaces and you can see it's finished to a high standard with engine turning on the base plate a sort of radiant Cote de Soleil instead of Geneva waves radiating out from an imaginary center point on top of the balance. You can see that there are both black polished and fired blue screws on this movement and the level of the anglage rendered, the mirrored chamfer, is higher than any JLC priced below $100,000. So it's not just a flagship complication and horological principle. This watch is actually finished to a much higher standard. It also goes through the Master 1000 Hours Control, which is a 1000 hour test of water resistance, power reserve, shock resistance, and of course chronomet precision. And this watch, as I owned it in white gold, was capable of running, even with the chronograph active, a plus one second per day for years on end. It is that accurate. It is that special. A revelation then, and still stunning today, this is the Duomet Chronograph Boutique Edition.